29. Use the standard entropy data in Appendix G to determine the change in entropy for each of the following reactions. All the processes occur at the standard conditions and at 25 degrees Celsius. So in this case, we have the balanced equation. Calcium oxide, CaO solid, plus water, H2O liquid, will give us calcium hydroxide, CaOH2 solid. Now in this case, we wanted to find the change in entropy, right? Change in entropy is a delta S value, right? Final minus initial. And since we're using standard values from a textbook, we're finding delta S notch. So anytime that you see that little notch symbol there, that means that it's all standard 25 degrees Celsius going to the back of the textbook, finding out those values. And that's what we did here. Well, that's what I did for you guys, right? So calcium oxide has a entropy value of 38.1 joules per mole times Kelvin. Water has a entropy value of 70. Keep in mind that this case, they wanted H2O liquid, not the gas one. So just be careful picking out um, your H2O values. Calcium hydroxide has an entropy value of 83.4. Now, in most cases, you can kind of guesstimate what your delta S value is going to be, whether it's going to be a positive or negative. Keep in mind of what these states look like. Since you're starting with the solid, you're starting with something that is very, very structured, and you're adding it with a liquid. Liquids are less structured, right? So they kind of, you know, they're kind of bouncing around. And maybe I'll do it like that. They're not as random as gases are, but they're more random than solids. But you lose that in your products. You're going to just a solid again, right? And keep in mind, the definition of entropy is talking about disorder or randomness of the molecules in your system. So since you went from something that, you know, had more randomness to just something that was structured, you decreased in your entropy. The way that we show that in terms of a change in entropy is a negative. If you were gaining randomness, that's a positive. But in this case, we're going to guesstimate that it's going to be a negative. Let's see if that's the case. What's the formula that we're going to use? It's this one right here. Delta S for your entire reaction right, Rxn reaction, is equal to the sum, that's the symbol, so the sum, aka addition, of all of your products, so the right side, minus the sum of all of your reactants. Pretty simple enough. Products minus reactants. Now, are these numbers going to be the same or are they going to be different? Well, this goes by your coefficients. In this equation, though, you only have one each. I don't see any numbers in front of CaO. That means that you only have one of them. H2O, you have one. And CaOH2, you only have one of them. So for each one of these, technically, we would times by one, right? But times by one is the same, same thing. But just to kind of have a system in place, that's what you would do. If you had like two H2Os, you take your 70 and times it by two. Now we just have to sum them up right? Literally in the balance equation, it's CaO plus H2O. So 38.1 plus 70. On the product side, since you only have the one compound, you don't have to add anything up. So the final amount for your products would be the 83.4. But now let's go to Calci and figure out what the sum of 38.1 plus 70 is. So going to Calci, I'm going to say 38.1 plus 70. Looks good to me. We get 108.1. Okay. Now I'm ready to plug it in. Delta S. So change in entropy for the whole entire reaction is products minus reactants, 83.4 minus the change in your reactants, which was the 108.1. Okay, calci time. Let's go for it. Uh, 80, 83.4 minus that answer. So I'm just going to grab that. Beautiful. Okay, looks good to me. Negative 24.7. And the units for your change in entropy is joules per Kelvin. Keep in mind that you get rid of the moles 
because that's what you were timesing these values. These ones in front were moles. So if you have moles on the top, moles on the bottom, the moles cancel out. So your final answer is a negative 24.7. And did we guesstimate correctly? Yes, we did. We knew it was a negative, but now we know it's exactly negative 24.7 joules per Kelvin. And that's it. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys are having a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.